Hello, you guys. How you guys are doing here, Jason? This is my Dell keyboard that I picked up. You know, I picked it up. Someone gave it to me. And let me show you another Dell keyboard. And this came from my good friend who owns a computer shop here. And this is how they should be maintained. Everything's working. You know, when I go to type, I can do the control alt shift or whatever the capital letter. And it works. Caps locks, number lock. I had the little thing here. Now, we've been having a problem with this board here with being intermittent. And I'm looking in here, and, and this one was given to me from a drift store. And it looks like someone's been into this keyboard before. If I look and dig a little deeper, you can see those scratches right there. And I see a lot of residue on those ports. And it doesn't mean because that this is bad. I'm looking at the board, and I learned really closely. And I'm looking at this trace right there, and this is a, this is a problem area right here that we're going to be looking at. A lot of times, if you have a problem on the board on any one of these traces, it can it can affect a lot of areas of the electronic item. And here's like this green light was replaced because it was burnt out. I was able to solder that in there, and this would have the volume that you can raise and lower. And looking at all these, looking at you know this solder right here, you know for some reason this uh, we know this area is a ground right here. I'm looking over at TP20, TP19, and then I'm looking over here at this trace right here, and I want I want to look at these these two areas. I know I, I mean this is this is where it gets technical now. When you solder a board, be very careful. You know you don't want to you don't want to make the board very very hot because it can crack. You have to use a desoldering, or they call it a flux, and then you would put it over here and desolder this and take this out of circuit. Now we're going to pull this board and we're going to look at this board because there's a lot of things we need to know about this keyboard. And Okay, there's the board pull. I'm going to zoom in. It looks like this solder joint is the problem right there. Looking at these, uh, and something, I'm looking at this area right in here. This is what I was looking at earlier. Two solder joints here. I was getting an intimate problem on here, and I pulled this connector off to see it wasn't. It was, it was straight like that, so that's not it. It could be any one of these, and the solder one of these in there is time consuming. And I did check, and still having a problem. I didn't show it on video, but you know I didn't catch it right away because I really wasn't using the keyboard one day. I didn't really notice it. Now I'm looking at this solder joint that someone's replaced right there. You can get cracked solder joints, and these are these are these are the these are the smart. I call them these chips here. There's the there's the there's the there's the brain of it right there. There's the chip right there, and here's some contacts right there. These are all clean, no oxidation on those, and how they work is they come in contact in this area here. And then it connects all this. And I did I did test this. It's getting a proper signal. So it's something on this board. And I can repair this board very easily. I can find I can find what I need. You know, that's been replaced right there. Someone had this before me. Yeah, it looks like. And this is not what I tell anyone that the average user to do himself. You got to really know what you're doing in here. You know, like I said, it could be any one of these. You want to you want to troubleshoot all areas of the board. Here's the board on the on the other side. You know, and some of the good Cayman keyboards are going to cost you some money. Some have backlit. Now, even if you come across a backlit keyboard, you can turn those lights off. And like I said earlier. This, this is a Dell one that I picked up, and I don't know who's been in this thing before. There's the ground right there, the ground I unhooked. Now, I could flow all these solder joints, and I have done that on other electronics to, to a success. Sometimes it's as simple of you want to get, you want to get a contact cleaner, and you want to, you want to, some, some, there's a certain way to clean the traces on the board and 
there's certain switches that you don't want to put the contact cleaner in. You know, this one, this one's proper. Now, on, on the pops, on certain electronics, they had a wire inside here. It was a round, it was a, a wire that was round. And if you put any cleaner, you would break the wires and some of them are very processed to rebuild. You know, though they call it a 10 geometer, you know. But I'm looking at all these solder joints on JP, J, JP1, JP2, TP14. Anywhere I see an issue, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I can flow solder. And you have to really know what you're doing with solder. This one looks very questionable right here. When I'm looking at this board, it looks like someone's someone's did something here prior who owned this before me. And that could be the problem on the if it's not getting a good ground. And I've seen this, I have seen this on other electronics. It can be in a minute. It looks like something it looks like something was done here. And I pull in closer and I see this I see this discoloration right here. And this is concerning me between between these three right here. And what I'll have to do is desolder all these and resolder. And that's where the, that's where it gets time for And then right here, if you go over here to P2, it's like a like a TP22. And that looks like looks like a TP for whatever it is. I did this light, and all these lights work. So we know it's it's powering up fine. It gets these all work. It's wanting to know why it becomes in a minute when you come over here and you type in here's here's where you would press down the control shift right and this would be the alt the alt now to do a capital letter it wasn't working certain areas but when I was typing regularly and didn't mess with it it worked fine so it's probably having an intimate connection there. This is a vision A0. And it's the ICU chip right there. ICU. And look how these are soldered here. It's just really amazing. I'm gonna wrap the video up. Just wanted to show off my Dell keyboard that we've been working on. This is the Dell multifunction keyboard. Now we're taking a look at why it ain't working. So till next time.